Okay, so uh, this problem ended up in homework 3.8 prematurely. It really belongs in homework 3.9. I'm not sure how I accidentally put that in there, but I did. So we're going to come back to that. So next we need to explore uh, E and the natural log uh, for derivatives. So this is section 3.9. And we are playing with exponential and logarithmic functions. So just a couple of reminders, some things about exponents and logs that you're going to need to know. Um, if I know that y is equal to b to the x, then the equivalent logarithmic statement is that x equals log base b of y. So these exponential and logarithmic functions are, are inverse functions. And if you look up the word logarithm in the dictionary, what you're going to find is that the word logarithm is synonymous with the word exponent. And that's basically what my equation up here says. It says my exponent is a logarithm, right? X is the log. The log is the exponent. The word logarithm and exponent mean exactly the same thing. And just a reminder, um, I know that 10 to the first power is 10, and I know that 10 squared is 100. And so the question is what power of 10 gives me something like 70. And so the answer to that is that exponent, and that exponent happens to be a logarithm. The base of the logarithm has to match the base of the exponential, and then 70 is what I'm trying to target. So in other words, in order to read something like this, this says what power of 10 gives us 70. So I expect back from your pre-calculus days that you can switch back and forth between logs and exponents. Um, some other important things about logs and exponents is the power rule for logarithms that if you have some log uh, of, let's say, y to the power n, that's equal to n times the log of y. Other things, if a log has no base, then it must be base 10 is the standard in this country, but it's not the standard everywhere in the world. And if you see a log with a base E, that is often abbreviated as LN, which stands for natural logarithm. Natural logarithm. And there's my L and there's my N. And the French guy came up with this first, so it's logarithm natural, something like that. Uh, let's see, what other things do I need you to know about logarithms? I think those are the basics. Uh, the other thing is um, that we need to know about is what is E? And there are a bunch of definitions about where E comes from. You know, a similar question I might ask you is what is pi? And somebody might respond, well, pi is 3.14. Like, nah, it's not really 3.14. It's a little more complicated than that. Uh, so the definition of pi is if we have a circle, then pi is the radius, is the ratio, excuse me, of the circumference to the diameter. So any circle, if you can perfectly measure its circumference and you can perfectly measure its diameter and you can do that division perfectly, you end up with pi. And we've been working on pi for a long time in our history. Uh, let me see. I missed some chat stuff. Oh, so Cole asked, uh, oh, back to that other function. Sorry, I missed your chat there. Uh, so here, now that I'm zooming in, the dots kind of went away. When I wasn't zoomed in, it was just having a trouble making those calculations. And again, how does a computer graph something? It, it plugs in X and calculates Y uh, a gazillion times and then connects the dots and it's having trouble connecting the dots. So I don't think this function has holes, except when the denominator here is zero. 
So any numbers that make this denominator zero would be a problem. Um, and, and that's when x plus 6y equals zero. So this function does have, that kind of makes an asymptote and it would be a slant asymptote, an oblique asymptote, um, but it's continuous everywhere except uh, on that asymptote is my belief about this function here. So, sorry, I missed that. I wish Zoom would like ring a bell when I have a chat, but I don't, it doesn't, it didn't used to do that and they may have fixed that. All right, back to this right here. All right, so, so, so pi is, is a number, it's ideally, right? This is the ideal of pi, this is where it comes from. And we have been working as humans for a long time to try and calculate digits of pi in our base 10 system. Now in binary, pi looks different, right? It doesn't look like 3.14, but it's still this idea. However, we decide to express it, whether we use base 10 or base two, um, or we use some other way to do it. Like there are sequences of fractions that add up to pi. E is kind of similar. It's this weird number. Where does it come from? One place it comes from is compound interest. So there's a compound interest formula that says F equals P times one plus R over N to the power N T, where N is the number of compounding periods per year. And if I simplify this equation a little bit and I let P equal one and I let R equal one, and I let t equal one, then I get f equals p is one, so who cares about that multiple, one plus one over n to the power n. And if we take the limit of that sucker as n gets big, we get e. So that's one place e comes from. Maybe you saw that in a pre-calculus class. It's a pretty common thing to, to look at in a pre-calculus class when they talk about e, the exponential base. <clears throat> um, and you can plug in big numbers and see that this is getting close to 2.71828, blah, 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 on the rest of the e. Uh, another place you can do is if we kind of flip n and look at, uh, like we, if we were to replace n with one over x, then as n goes to infinity, one over x is going to zero. So an equivalent limit to this would be the limit as x goes to zero, and I'm replacing n with one over x, which means x is one over n. So this gives me one plus x to the power of one over x, and this should look familiar to you because this was in our limit homework often. And this is also P. E. And the homework problems you saw had things like, sometimes you might've seen that in the homework on limits, but you also may have seen this one. One plus X to the power like three over X. And note here, I can rewrite that as the limit as X goes to zero of one parentheses, one plus x to the one over x, all to the third power, right? Because a power to a power means multiply, three times one over x is three over x. And uh, based on my statement above right here, this limit right there is e. So this limit right here is going to be e cubed. And I mentioned uh, way back when we were doing those limits that eventually I would, we were only able to do this by a table of values. And then experimentally, we would end up with whatever e cubed is. So e raised to the third. So experimentally, I would get, hey, that looks like it's about 20.0855. So I don't know if you remember doing the tables for that in the homework. It turns out that value is approaching actually has a better name than 20.0855. Uh, it's e cubed, which is kind of neat. So what's my point here? My point is, where does e come from? e comes from either this limit right here or this limit right here. And there's a bunch of different limit definitions for e. Here are two versions of them. Here's another one. E is the number that 
that satisfies this limit. And I'll show you the limit. So E is the only number that if we let X go to zero, that this is equal to one. Now, if we tried to cheat and plug in zero, E to the zero is one, one minus one is zero, X is going to zero. So this is one of those indeterminate forms, right? So that's indeterminate. So E is the only number uh, for which uh, we get one as the limit here. So that's another definition for E. So why do I care about that? Well, we want to know if f of x is equal to E to the x, what is f prime of x? Well, f prime of x is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h. So we got to go back to our limit definition every time we don't know something about a derivative over h. And if I replace f with e to the x, this gives me uh, the limit as h goes to zero of e to the x plus h minus e to the x all over h. And let's do some algebra here because if we try to plug in zero right away, we get zero over zero, which is indeterminate, which means you don't know anything, do some algebra. All right, so the algebra I'm going to apply here is on e to the x plus h. I can rewrite that as e to the x times e to the h, right? Because we have a rule that says if you multiply two powers with the same base, you add the exponents. So here's that. And then I can note here that there's a common factor of e to the x on each side of the subtraction, and I can factor that out. So this right here is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of e to the x times this fraction, e to the h minus one over h. Now, this is the limit as h goes to zero. There is no h here, so I can pull that out of the limit. So now this is equal to e to the x times the limit as h goes to zero of e to the h minus one over h. And I'm making this claim here that e is the only number for which this limit right here is equal to one. And that's a definition for e. 2.71828 blah, 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 blah. That's this definition right here. That set of, that decimal value is the only one that makes this work. So this limit right here is one. So that means the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So now I can go back and do that other problem because I know the derivative of e to the x, it's e to the x. So back here, I'm gonna do implicit differentiation, the derivative with respect to x of e to the three x y has to equal the derivative with respect to x of y to the fourth power. And so here, uh, notice I have a function instead of just an X up here. So the chain rule is going to apply here. The outer function for this side right here is E to the power, whatever. And the inner function is that power three X Y. So the chain rule says, take the derivative of the outer function E to a power. It's derivative is E to the power. That power happens to be three X Y. Chain rule says, since that's not just an x, you better multiply by its derivative. So the derivative of three x, y, that is a product. So I have to multiply by the product rule here. Product rule says, take the derivative of the first function. So let's call the first function three x. The derivative of three x is three, then multiply by the second function, plus leave the first function alone, multiply by the derivative of the second function. Well, the derivative of y is just y prime. So I had to use the chain rule because that wasn't just an X. And then the inner function was a product. So I had to multiply by the product rule. 
on the other side, derivative of 4y is 4y to the third, and the chain rule says, hey, remember y is a function of x, so you better multiply by its derivative, y prime. All right, so then we'll just the rest of the question. I forgot, find dy dx, which is y prime, so now I have to actually solve in general for this one, so let's do that. To solve for y prime, what do I want to do? I think I am going to divide this to the other side. So that's going to give me 3y plus 3xy prime equals 4y cubed times y prime over e to the 3xy. And then I'm going to subtract this over, and I'm running out of room. Let's see if I can get this right. 3y, 3xy prime. So I've got 3y plus 3xy prime equals 4y cubed y prime over e to the 3xy. And again, I'm going to subtract that over here. So that's going to give me 3y equals 4y cubed y prime over oops, 3e to the 3xy minus 3xy prime. And then here, I have all the y primes all on the same side, so I can factor that y prime out. So 3y equals y prime times 4 y, oops, it's not 4, that's the one, 4y cubed over e to the 3xy minus 3x. And then let's bring that, so I'll have to divide by that. So y prime equals 3y over 4y cubed minus 3x, oops, just this part is over e to the 3xy. And that's a complex fraction. We probably should clean that up. So I guess what I would do to clean that up is multiply top and bottom by e to the 3xy. I think that might be the way to go. So then I get 3y times e to the 3xy over 4y cubed. When I distribute here, the, these guys cancel, but I get to distribute there too. So that's going to be 3x e to the 3xy. And I don't, I think that might be the simplest, the least ink version of this. Although I don't know, that blue one might use slightly less ink, but it's a fraction within a fraction. They're pretty close in terms of ink weight. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with this is most likely the simplest form of that answer. That was exciting, all those rules combined together. Okay, so we got time for one more problem before we're done today. So, oops, and my slides are out of order. I want this one over here. So next, what I want to take a look at is uh, y equals the natural log of x. And in order to do this one right here, I'm going to use uh, implicit differentiation, uh, but I'm going to rewrite it. Uh, this is equivalent to e to the power y equals x. So this right here is equivalent to that statement because of the way the natural log and e are related. So remember, what is a logarithm? A logarithm is an exponent. So y has to be the exponent, and ln is really log base e of x. So this statement right here says e to what power is x? e to what power is x? Okay, so that's the translation, and I'm going to differentiate this. So the derivative with respect to x of e to the y equals the derivative with respect to x of x. 
So derivative of e to a power is e to that power, but y is a function of x, so I have to multiply by its derivative, which is y prime. And on the other side, uh, I get one. So then taking this a little bit farther, um, I'm going to divide by e to the y, so y prime is equal to one over e to the power of y. Now I have a problem here. I want this to be a function of x, right? So if, if y here is f of x, I want this to be f prime of x. And right now it's f prime of y, which is a problem. But what do I know? I know that y is the natural log of x. So the question here is, what is e to the power of natural log of x? Anybody know the answer to that? e to the natural log of x is, remember they're inverse functions, e to the power and natural log. What do inverse functions do to each other? Not one, close. If we take f of f inverse of x, what does that always lead to since they are inverse functions? Remember this a couple days ago. X, yes, yeah, these cancel each other. And so my denominator is really just an X. So it turns out the derivative of the natural log is one over X. So we just gained two new derivatives in our collection of derivatives. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Um, and so what we need to do next is figure out, well, what if it's like log base 10 or 10 to the x? Um, and so that is in the book and in the homework. So you're going to get to play around with that. And we will uh, come back to that um, in the next class. So other important derivative we got today, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And we're out of time for fun. My apologies that we're out of time.